customers are stuck in the past and they can't accept that times have changed and hard work is not enough to make it anymore. They completely destroyed the economy for Gen Zs and Millennials and now we're all just struggling to get by and I'm going to prove it to you today. Also proving that they weren't really working harder than us, they just had it easier. So if you saw my original video, we calculated the average cost of living and expenses nowadays for Gen Z and Millennials. And this was the grand total. But today, using those exact same measurements, I'm going to calculate for you how much it would have cost a boomer to get by when they were our age. Again, just to prove that it's not that we're not working as hard as you, it's that you guys had it easier, so you didn't even actually have to work as hard as us. I did so much research, and I'm going to try and make this so easy for you all to understand so no one can screw it up this time. The comment I got a million times last time is, boomers weren't born in the 70s and 80s, that's Gen X. You're talking about Gen X. No, I'm not. I'm talking about boomers because someone born in the 70s is not in their 20s or 30s in the 70s as well. But let's define boomers. They're born between 1946 and 1964, which means they would have peaked around our age in the 70s and 80s. So stop telling me if I'm Gen Z, my parents have to be Gen X because my parents were born in the 50s and mind your own business. Not everyone has kids at 21, Cheryl. Today, in 2023, federal minimum wage is $7.25. Because I have a college degree, I made all of those calculations as $20 an hour, which is 2.8 times minimum wage. That's what you're getting in your 20s with a college degree. To start, I picked 1980s because it's peak 20s and 30s for the boomers. And it was easiest to find records for that. So in 1980, federal minimum wage was raised to $3.10. So if you take $3.10 and you multiply it by 2.8, because we're assuming everyone in this video went to college, so you're not making minimum wage, you're making $8.68 an hour. Now multiply that by 40 hours a week and four weeks out of the month. We're here, but now we have to calculate taxes out of this. I looked up historical tax rate documents and found it was about 9%. Multiply this by 9% and you get about 125, so we'll have to take that out. In 1980, here's what your take home is after taxes. Now we have to subtract your rent, and the average rent around 1980 was $200. But since average rent in my video was $2,000 and I only took out $1,500 because I found a deal, we're going to pretend that you found a good deal on rent too. Instead of $200 for rent and utilities, etc., you're paying $180. Yippee, you saved $20. Now you need to pay for food every month. And I found these awesome government websites that keep the historical prices of food over the years. And after looking through a bunch of data again, I found that food was about a third of the price that it is now. So if we were spending $20 a day for one and a half meals, 20 times 0.3 is 6.6. 6.6 times seven days a week times four weeks in the year is 184. Take 184 out of here. You're sitting at $900 left so far, but we're not done here. Referencing our original graph for college tuition and based off the fact that you guys all claim you work super hard, if you worked a full-time job in the summer, you could afford to pay for college in full which means you weren't taking out any student loans. So we don't really have to factor in student loans for this, or it would be like 10 or 20 bucks at most. Now, I couldn't find much on car insurance, but given the inflation car insurance calculator, if I was paying 70 bucks a month, you were paying roughly $8 a month. Now we're here, but you gotta pay for gas as well. Here are the historical gas prices over time. A gallon was about 0.85 cents. Given the time, your car probably ran through more gas than mine, so we'll say you were getting 30 gallons a month, so 30 times 0.85 is 25 bucks. So we'll subtract 25 bucks. Now I'm paying 50 bucks for my life-saving medication, but it looked like insurance back in the day would have pretty much covered it. But for argument's sake, we'll knock off another five bucks just to keep you happy. I said 50 bucks in 2023 for things like soap, tampons, laundry, all the other groceries you need. Overall grocery prices were still about a third of the cost they are today. So 50 times 0.3 is 16.5. So we'll take that off. Now we have to take out retirement savings, but it's confusing because back in the day they had these things called pensions. So there was less personal retirement savings and I got very confused by it all. All I could find is that if you did want to personally save for retirement beyond that, the max you could do every year was 1500 bucks. If you divide that by 12 months a year, you get 125 bucks a month, which means your grand total for everything at the end of the month is this much money left over. Wait, so you're telling me I would have had this much money left over instead of this doing the exact same things and work and hours if I was just living in 1980? But do you want to add even more insult to injury? Because I sure do. Let's do the inflation calculator. You know what the equivalent of having $720 left over at the end of every month would be in 2023? Almost $2,700 every month just to throw, that's throwaway cash. That's what I call burn it cash. You could throw it in a bonfire for all you care. It means at the end of every year, boomers had $32,000 just laying around to do whatever they wanted with. Doing literally nothing different than any of Gen Z is currently doing. And in an ironic twist, boomers call Gen Z and millennials lazy when it's really boomers who are lazy because they refuse to learn what's actually going on in the world.